groups who, again, will align with the state gain concessions and put us in a worse, even worse position than we already are, and we remain subjugated. So revolution is a very careful process, and it's a very arduous process, but we have to be willing to take on that work if we're really about that liberation. Um, sorry, Chuse, did you say you wanted to say something, and then we'll go back to Brief Scoop? Yeah, um, I did want to say something, but there are some new people on the stage, so I want to let them talk first. So, Brief Scoop, if you can talk for like a couple seconds, well, not a couple seconds, but, you know, as long as you need to, and then we'll get to the new speakers. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. Um, so at um, the, 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 the whole awful thing that I was describing, um, so the people that were actually standing up for the assaulter were the um, Cointelpro. So they were standing up for this person and they were doing it, of course, to cause chaos. So it wasn't that um, it, it wasn't the it wasn't the feeling that uh, that the person so that so they were defending the assaulter. A, secondly, and we found out later on that they were cops, so it made complete sense. Um, so so I always believed the women who came up and and um, and accused the man, um, but he was being protected by CoinTelPro. And they were making sure that he stayed within the movement. And then they used this whole thing about restorative justice to turn it upside down, saying, we can't kick this man out because that, you know, what we need is restorative justice. And I remember thinking, what? Um, so that so so it wasn't restorative justice for the assaulters. By the way, that wasn't even discussed, right? The, the discussion was you know, that we can't kick this man out, this person that's been accused. So it was complete Cointel Pro behavior, you know, to, to cause complete chaos. And and so that's what I was describing, just to be very clear. Um, no, thank you, because I missed, I did misunderstand you. So I'm so glad you got to explain that better. And yes, thank you. Yes, so, so, th so that was that. Um, and then, uh, oh gosh, I think I forgot the, the, the last point. Um, but those were, I think, two really important things. Oh, the last one was, and yes, back then I used to think that, remember, I'm an immigrant in the U.S., so I didn't know, like, American racism takes a minute to sink in, right, when you're not from here. So I had bought into this whole idea that, um, you know, before you come here, you really do believe that racism ended in 1964 when the Civil Rights Bill was signed. That's the, America has good PR. That's the impression they give you when you're overseas. And so when I came here, it took a minute for it to sink in that, holy shit, the radicals are freaking fascists. The liberals are fascists. The right-wingers are fascists. Like they're all fascists of varying degrees. I did not know this. And so back then, this is t over 10 years ago, yes, I was still operating around saltine Ritz boxes um, before I knew <laughs> Before I knew that there was no salvaging, uh, you know, this crowd, it's a recorded space. So, you know, I, I don't care too much for um, some store brands. So I'm being generic. But um, yeah, so I, I no, I no longer deal with the saltines. You know, um, I don't care for it as a brand. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that was no. it. Thank you. No, Bree Scoop, I'm really glad you grabbed the mic. Really, all the points you brought up, it was very important. No real talk. Thank you. <laughs> You're killing me with the saltines. I love that shit. You know I do. <laughs> but uh And I'll just can I just also add that I think you did say before that the people who was defending the assaulter ended up being the police. But just for the sake of the space, it's important to remember that some people work like feds without being on the payroll. So anybody who is sitting behind working again, like with an abuser, whether they're a cop or not, they're still causing chaos in the movement. And that's how they're acting. By the way, can so, I just add? Yes, that's mm -hmm. absolutely true. Yes, the, 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 the cops were leading it. But yes, there were people that, you know, that weren't cops that fell for it, too, and that were part of. Yeah, it was horrible. The whole thing was awful. 
Yeah, no, and it sounds it sounds horrible because I've also been in spaces where things like that completely obliterate all the work that you're doing. And it's I say things like that because yes, there is one perpetrator, right? There is one person responsible, solely responsible for the harm, but there are a lot of enablers. And I think that we see a lot of parallels in, in the ways that people move when there's interpersonal violence to the ways that people move when there's also systemic violence. Because the same type of tactics that you know Israel will use against the Palestinians or even the United States will use against us in the Imperial core, it mirrors what we see in our organizations. So I think that, you know, if we again, like I do appreciate. Um, everything you said, and I do just want to uplift that what you said about pen space being intimidating, like part of that is also an aggression, right? It is also an attack because pen is not intimate. Well, I, w- I won't say that. I will say that pen offers spaces and there are spaces in which we talk very candidly about the oppression that we face. And it's only intimidating because in other spaces, we expect abuse apologism and on other spaces, we expect harm to happen. And when people are there to interrupt it, then they suddenly become the big bad guy. So Hamas becomes the big bad guy when they fight back against 75 years of imperialism. And then in our own interpersonal relationships, we become afraid of people, not only because of how they carry themselves principally, but also because of their identities. We don't expect a, you know, a black cis woman to address harm in certain ways because we expect the socialization process that we've all gone through to make them passive aggressive or to make them docile. And I just want all of us in the room to just remember that that's not just something that like is like a political thing. That is what causes certain people to be alienated from certain communities because we could we could come across an abuser and an abuser always has community. No one's ever scared of the person who's actually the person who's causing fucking harm. And like some people, I find some people will be around white people all fucking day. They'll be jolly with white people. But as soon as they come around some black people, now suddenly, you know, they're walking different or they're feeling more defensive. And it it harms the ways that we build camaraderie with one another. So in that, in that, you know, acknowledging and that truth telling, I would I just expect like us to always also hear about the ways that we also like are telling on ourselves and it's okay to tell on yourself as long as we understand that like this is all in the purposes of building because I can't help but feel a type of way of hearing that this is intimidating when I know how hard like Penn specifically is working to make sure that everyone is feeling safe in the space. And so I, I hope you just take that in here and like you know, when you have those feelings, because feelings are real, but feelings are also not facts. And we have studies that show that crackers really do get scared when they see a nigga. Like, it's not, some, they're make, they're not sometimes making that up. That's actually something that happens in their brain. And if they have to work through that, then also we have to work through all ways we were in, indoctrinated in anti-blackness as well. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, w- I, was say- I was saying that the space is intimidating as a compliment because in a way it is intimidating because of all the good content. But yes, because also it is, you know, it, it is challenging to talk about some of this stuff, especially when it involves looking in the mirror, you know, on the real. No, absolutely. I'm glad that dialogue happened. It was really important. Um, We'll go ahead and go to JV. And then if anyone else wants to grab a mic, feel comfortable to. Also to remind people to look in the comments, I put some mutual aids I saw on the timeline. Again, we can talk about revolution all day, but the most important part and pillar of revolution is having those communities. And part of having community is making sure each other is sheltered, has food and has access to healthcare in, in any way possible. Even a sharing of a mutual aid post can help in that. So. I encourage people to practice that. They're in the comments as well as the Jumbotron. The PDF is also up there. Share with as many people as possible, especially with the assault on books and the access to books becoming slimmer and slimmer. That too is an act that we need to start practicing and giving information and make sure it's accessible. I forgot to say in the beginning of this space that you can also turn on the captions on this space and that helps as well. 
So I'll I'll do a better job at that and also mentioning that in the beginning. Uh, JV, you wanted to add to the conversation? Go ahead. Yes, hi. Um, peace of the room. Uh, I wanted to give a submission, but before I give the submission, I think the conversation is moving, and I wanted to say some things before I move to my submission. I appreciate the mutual aid um, inserts that you put on top. I actually was looking for different mutual aid um, responses or history, so I'm going to use that. Um, also, I want to be visible in this moment really quick. Uh, I was instructed by somebody that I appreciate and I think uh, is important to me and is a, is a wise person to um, speak to my, my failure. I was very misogynistic initially when I came on this app and um, I apologize for that and I think people should hear my voice and I think that it's humiliating and it's wrong and it's it's important for people to know that we should move away from that uh, we should not I should not position myself like that I should not make somebody feel lower than me or humiliate someone and to that, I take all responsibility to that, for that, and that's my um, that's my position there. My submission is um, when it comes to um, intersectionality and people are harmed. That's something that I did not particularly understand until I hear other people's voices and lived experience in these things and i have made a correlation to patriotism american patriotism and people say they are patriots and what america means and i always have a disconnect from that because it never includes the uh visionaries the um craftsmen the tradesmen the uh the descendants of slaves the uh so many things that America is. There's always patriotism, but it's rooted in some type of globalist type of Europeanism. And and my concern is that specifically, well, how are how does patriotism look when you don't recognize people that have been harmed? And the correlation that I make is with the uh, the black experience. How can I be black without recognizing harm people? There are people who I guess have uh, different proclivities or different uh, positions in our community and they're important. So I think the same things are true. And I wanted to say I recognize that. And I think now that that's important and I should have recognized that before. But I do recognize that now that's part of a whole group and uh similar to not recognizing america without recognizing black people we should recognize blackness and recognize people that are harmed however however they posture themselves however they recognize themselves they are our people so i just wanted to give that submission i think there's value to that and i appreciate uh learning and building and hearing other voices and challenging my own thoughts and challenging my worldview and um, thank you for the conversation. So yeah, I want to address the uh, the point about patriotism, and it's interesting, right? Because so I'm going to draw it to some of the act since we're online. I'm going to use examples of what we've with some of us have witnessed online, and that is the whole ejection of patriotism into the reparations movement by outside forces. And we would have to know and understand these forces and why it's necessary to combat it. My thing when someone asks me about patriotism is why would anyone want to be patriotic to a white settler colonial state? And I stop, I start there. Like, why would anyone want to be patriotic to a land that in order to exist has to keep two million plus people within prison for profit at all times? You know, what, what allegiance do I have or inclusion would I want into a imperialist entity that goes around the world and destroys people's homes, livelihoods, and wipes out whole cultures 
just be for a profit and for power. I don't want to see my people included in that. I don't want a place within that system. I don't want um, any kind of campaign effort to say, hey, your patriotism or your your country needs to include me. No, we're on the outside and I'm glad we are, but we need to destroy it. Like this is, if, if we understand our position within this system and what we're really living under is that we will start looking at, at America as again, a white settler colonial state. I have no patriotic leaning towards it. It must be destroyed at all costs because I want to be free and I want everyone to be free. So that's important because as again, I talked about reparations being used as a Trojan horse by a group called PFAIR that has put a lot of money into creating certain people to get platforms, to be catapulted, to start co-opting movements and talking points. A lot of times these people have wrapped themselves in the American flag. And I've encouraged people to identify with that fucking rag. And again, what you're identifying with can't be repurposed. You have to look at it for the reality that it is. When you wrap yourself in that flag, you are wrapping yourself in imperialism. You're wrapping yourself in genocide. You're wrapping yourself in ecocide. You're wrapping yourself in a country that, as we speak, is trying to make ways and laws in which it is legal to reinstitute child slavery. You're, you're, you're wrapping yourself in something in a... A place that builds schools only to indoctrinate people and miseducate people so that they can continue to be cogs in a wheel and be exploited for their labor and their children would be cause to the same fate onward and onward until there's nothing left. And I think, again, as we have these conversations and we ask ourselves, why do we want to be patriotic? I think it goes to what we've talked about before. And we've talked about the hijacking of our imagination and our mental enslavement to where we can't see any other way of life or liberation unless it is patriotic or in allegiance with the indoctrination of the American dream. And it is a nightmare for the world over, including ourselves. It is there is no dream that no American dream that is leading to our liberation. America in the West must fall. And I would hope that as we continue having these conversations, that we open ourselves up to more of the possibility of what the world looks like without these oppressive empires in existence and that there has been a world before they existed and there will be another without it. Whether it falls and crumbles and burns in ashes because of the contradictions just becoming too much or the people bring about the change because they have decided enough is enough and they want to build a world in which we're free. But either way, you will not find patriotism to America in that world. And I would ask you, like, what does that mean to you then? What's up, JV? Did you want to follow up? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that. And that was meaningful. Uh, so I don't even want to interact with, with that statement um, because I think it, it meant a lot. M my question is, if there, if we're not going to repurpose um, patriotism in America, how about misogynistic black men? Are we not going to repurpose misogynistic black men? Or are we going to just disqualify them? Or is it hope would misogynistic black men. I want to get your opinion first before we offer up ours. What do you think? Well, I'm, you I'm, do, I'm, well, one, one, I'm sorry, one, do you view yourself as a misogynistic black man? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that's, that's a good start. So let's start from there. So then for you, what does, what, when you, what do you mean exactly too? So I understand when you say repurpose misogynistic black men, what do you mean by that? Um, humility, acceptance, introspection, um, re redirection, uh, re-edifying, and um, care, love, appreciation. I think that's what it means. Mm. I have an answer, but I want to think on it some more, meaning I want to make sure what I say is exactly how I want to say it. So if someone else wants to speak, just give me like a couple seconds, but I do have an answer. To choose or four cups or any or Biko yeah, even. I, 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 I like to say something about that. Look, I deal with it every day. Understand? The slick sly shit, behind the back shit, homophobic shit, uh, uh, haterism shit. We talk about love, humility, and all that's on the front end on stage. But we still, when we with our boys, when we kicking it. And why not? This me and you talking and all that other dumb shit. We still are doing this shit. You understand? At some point in time, 
you can't be a two-faced motherfucker. Okay? Because a lot of motherfuckers, this is the problem we got from, from the jump in this thing. We got a lot of people in the movement, some two-faced motherfuckers. This is how they, they come in here, they didn't read this, they didn't read that, they didn't read boo, 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 boo. I'd be scared of them, you know. They, they learn their language, what's a turf, what's this, what's this, what not, but they still a motherfucking scam artist. You understand? Bro, uh, when that, the church is for, for uh, the, the priest is for that type of shit. You understand? Uh, 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 uh. Because what the thing is, how, 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 what kind of forgiveness you want? You know, you know. I, 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 I it's, 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 it's oxymoronic. You got to be that you ain't gonna get it nowhere else in, in, in none of these things and whatnot. We're not here to enable that, you know, because what it what it do is because we've all been inculcated. What it do is allow it, it allow all the other shit we've been poisoned with in our brain to come forth. Now I got to be sympathetic to the, the poison. You understand? Because really, it's poison. But I did want to say this, because at least you was honest to go and speak on it. That's one thing I said. You did speak on this. It's what it is. You did make a confession, whatnot. But the thing is, all this stuff about rape culture, all this, that, and the other, to me, it's more complicated. Because when it becomes my bestie, my ride or die, Are we applying the same modalities and methodologies? Are we that adamant when it comes to my bestie? When it comes to my ride or die? You see, because many, we do, when it comes to my partners, if I have partners in the movement, or if I'm monogamous, or non-monogamous or polyamorous. When there's sexual assault accusations or allegations, how do we deal with it when we are polyamorous? How do we deal with it when we're non-monogamous or monogamous? Because that's a different cat that's a different level of accountability. It's cool with a motherfucker I really don't know. I can check that motherfucker. But somebody, I'm really cool. I'm really, really, I fuck, I fuck with you. Somebody, I really fucks with you. That's where the accountability comes in. Now, motherfucker, I really don't know. There's some time uh, we see whatever you come participate. But somebody, I really fuck. So I'm asking the question is, how do we address that level? of accountability because you can't have a guerrilla movement and uh uh your partner's doing all kind of fuck shit or uh, 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 you and now we want to enable this shit because we sleeping with a motherfucker and other emotional issues are going on or, or a motherfucker I should, i'm cool with and we really really cool with and they doing all kind of fuck shit you know because it just ain't that simple it's a, a motherfucker uh, because to me Intimate partner violence, domestic violence, uh, 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 is really something that is uh, uh, we are not really addressing. And the reason why I say that, I'm gonna read: eighty-five percent of women murder victims are killed by a man they know. Most rapes or sexual assault about a person they know very well or, or and it's done and most sexual assault is done in private understand so those are dynamics it is because uh often we address this as, as a abstraction of some motherfucker that's tripping 
it ain't some just motherfucker that's tripping. It's some motherfucker we uh, we in our feelings about. So when we talk about accountability, we have to look at it not just some motherfucker I I I, I lightweight know I work with we kick it with that's it. It's motherfuckers because in order in order really for all this to happen, you got to really let your guard down and motherfucker trust you. That's how motherfuckers get violated. That's why it happens in private spaces. That's why it's a motherfucker you really, you really, really know that you thought you thought otherwise. So that's a different type of accountability and a paradigm shift. So how do we get this paradigm shift in a guerrilla movement? Because you're operating in uh, 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 close proximity. If we talk about the methodology, asymmetrical methodology of guerrilla movement. Y'all, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a intense proximity. And when you have intense proximities, how do you deal with accountability? Then, not just another motherfucker out here that's that's there, but motherfuckers, I'm I I fucks with her, my bestie. That's the question I want to put on the table. And far as far as far as you, JB. My suggestion is, and I don't say this as a, a ridicule, get some therapy, bro. Get in a man's group, a domestic violence group, with a, fem- or, or, or with a feminist or, or a queer coordinator. You know, uh, they they have them through the courts where they, you mandated to go. When I know a dude was ahead of it uh, here, here where I lived at a long time ago and what have you. Get, get some therapy, bro. Get some therapy or get some books. The books ain't going to do you no good. Because reading is just a die that You got to have actual application of what you're reading and discernment and interaction about it. And you, oftentimes you have to get in some group group thing. That's what I was saying. Because right now, right now, you, 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 you put it out there. It's a thing when you can, uh, shit can happen. Okay. But, but Miko, I was instructed by the group to do this. Wait, hold on, JV. We're still going to, hold on. We're still going to go through the. That's all good. But what I'm saying is, man, my thing is, I'm not big on state, state states and therapy. Or whatever, I don't know if you got insurance or all that. It's all good. I ain't got no issue with it, but I'm just saying in terms of suggestions for you, you know, get some therapy. And not just any therapist. You know, those who are radical, you can get some referrals or some other things, feminist therapy, queer that might want to fuck with you if you got some insurance. Get some referrals. That's my thing. Not what you was instructed. That's all good. That's a whole separate thing. So that's a... Thank, that's a, hey, thank you for that, brother. Thank you for that. Okay. But the other part I initially stated, how do we deal with that level of accountability? What I just said. Okay, so real quick, because I don't want to forget what I'm going to say, and then we can go to the co-host and then four of cups or whichever y'all decide who goes first, because I didn't see the hands, unfortunately. But so I want to address what JV said, right? When I asked him if he's a, a misogynist and he said yes, to me, that is the correct answer. All of us are under patriarchy, just like Choose and others spoke in previous spaces and this space, that we are, none of us are exempt to all the isms that we get indoctrinated with on a daily basis to follow up to with then is there, I think you asked like, as far as what does it look like to restore those misogynist men back into the fold? Here's my thing. At our current condition, right? Where Biko named over 85% of people of women killed are killed by someone they know. As many people that you can talk to who work within groups will tell you that, and Brief Scoop pointed out too, where sexual assault is present within even the so-called revolutionary orgs. 
I analyze those conditions as being that my strategy is not to have one that's centered on restoring misogynists, but to protect the people and the victims that they prey upon. So what does that look like? If you're someone who you understand that you are indoctrinated with misogyny, that you have acted in acts that are misogynist, that you hold these views where you don't see people who are not men as human beings, right? That they're not worth listening to, that their rights are secondary or none, non-existent or worth fighting for at all. Well, my thing is that you do not need to be in an organization. When I say you, this isn't all directed at you. This is all of us. So I don't want you to take it as this, we're like all coming at JV, but it includes you, but it includes us all. So if we say like, yo, I'm for the liberation of of black women and other uh, gender marginalized people, that doesn't just come with words and rhetoric. It ha- you have to build a strategy in your life and what that looks like to be a direct action. So what I mean by that is let's use the app again for an example, right? The people in here who would be identified as cis men who are inoculated with misogyny, who are around other misogynists, If you're someone who says, you know what, I want to be free, I want to be liberated, I want to take part in a revolutionary process that liberates the globe the world over, you're going to have to start confronting other misogynists and other men, not only online, but in your group. Avoiding them does nothing. Because as we see, those people get community. They get attention because of the cessationalism that they'll say things that you don't necessarily want to be seen as saying, but you don't have a problem with being saying against a person that you don't like who's of a marginalized gender. So again, a lot of the times where we talk about that people, we get to a point where people will admit that they're misogynist, but then do no work towards destroying the patriarchy or confronting the misogynist men around them. It means like now when you go get a haircut, you need to bring up the topic of patriarchy and say, niggas, what are we doing to destroy this shit so we can get free and have that real ass conversation? Yeah, that's hard, right? That's now like, oh shit, these niggas gonna look at me different. Well, then are you really dedicated to the to revolution and liberation? Or are you not? It looks totally different. It means talking to your dad and your uncles and your cousins and being like, yeah, nigga, we play in space, but let's talk about some real shit. Like, why is it that we let the, that predator that we all know is the funny uncle keep coming to the cookouts? We need to jump in and eliminate that nigga. And then we need to all as a family be accountable for allowing the, our other family members to be preyed upon. And it becomes a daily process. Now you start looking at things that are in your direct circle. That is not just about, oh, I'll go hold a sign at a protest. Or when I get a mic in a space, I'll say the right thing. Or when I go to the organization meetings, I can now use the right rhetoric. No, it becomes now you can actually do things. You have to do things within your, your immediate circle as well as anywhere in which you engage. So if you engage on an app, you know, there's misogynist shit happening. You know, there's violent misogyny happening. On app. Guess what? You got to get involved. You're going to have to say something, whether you know the victim or not, because then you will start looking at those people who engage in the violent isms that we named as actual counter revolutionaries that threaten your freedom as well. And so they have to get they have to go. I say when you start developing that mind and that framework, that's when you start seeing the change. And then again, that's when then you can become the begin in the process of also setting your own self free and be able to open up to a community. But until then, the community does not owe. A, re- a restoration process to misogynists, not at all. Start eliminating some of these other niggas that make it very dangerous to practice that type of community. And then after the after it's safe, after we created the conditions and when now it's safe to start talking about that, then we can do that. But currently right now, that's not where we're at. The victims are too many and the safe spaces for violent predators is way too many and too frequent. And the amount of people who are willing to be silent or act like they don't see anything outnumber the people who are actually willing and are doing something about it so that would be my response and choose i think four was first but i'm not sure um y'all, y'all can decide which one goes next what about my other question we'll address it afterwards uh i'm gonna let the other speakers go i remember it but we'll address it afterwards Biko. we got you now she was first pen kind of just um said what I was about to say but pretty much like um, just to reiterate what has been said on this space it's pretty much just like it's important to name um, who you are and how you've been indoctrinated Um, but it's also important to do the work necessary to make sure that you are not 
continuing to perpetuate these things and also to um, make sure that you're not like, like pretty much like ask yourself like, what am I doing to deprogram myself? Like, how am I showing up in ways that are um, decolonizing my mind and healing this relationship that I have with women or with trans people or with whoever and also just like um I don't know constantly being honest with yourself is hard but it's something we all gotta do no absolutely thank you oh go ahead cheers yeah and I also just want to, like, I think, name an important part of accountability is you kind of have to sit what people say to you for a little minute before you start asking more questions. And I say this as somebody who has also had to face accountability because I'm not perfect. I'm not even a good person. And people who I'm in community with have had to name all the ways that I'm fucked up to me before. And because I love them and because they love me, they had to tell me about myself. And because I love them, I don't put them in a situation in which they have to do more labor to now tell me the ways to go to make sure that I'm not going to hurt them again. That's not fair because they already have to deal with the fact that I hurt them. So how could I sit in their face and then be like, okay, like, now what do I need to do? Sometimes what you need to do when you're harmful to somebody is sometimes you need to leave them alone. And sometimes you just need to ask them like what they need from you, not to make you back in their life or to make them trust you again, just because people need things after you hurt them. And I especially see it as something that we need to work on is, you know, a lot of times when people say, you know, this is something that's wrong, instead of taking that time, we'll then ask them for more labor on top of the emotional labor that they have to do to heal from what has happened. So while I can understand the inclination to be like, okay, well, what do I do now? Part of liberation is taking your own agency back as a person. And I'm actually not helping you if I allow you to then, you know, you want your agency from the state, right? You want to be away from the United States and away from this long-standing genocide that they've been committing against Black people. But then you want to hand it to somebody else and then have them tell you what to do. But part of liberation is you being able to make decisions on your own that lead to your own liberation, and so I think especially when we call out patriarchy or misogyny in these movements, a lot of the brunt is put on Black majors. Um, and that's Black people with marginalized genders, right? And I don't think that that's fair. I don't think that that's fair to ask us, you know, what do we do with the misogynists? Because we don't have to ask y'all what to do with the homophobes because y'all dap them up and y'all chill with them. We don't have to ask y'all what y'all do with the transphobes because y'all know what to do. Y'all chill with them. <laughs> y'all zap them up. But suddenly, when we're talking about women, cis women, trans women, mar like non-binary people, trans men, suddenly nobody knows what to do. But everybody knew how to be community with the abusers. And that don't make sense to me. It don't make sense to me, and I feel like it's disingenuous. And I actually think it's a continuation of the pre-existing inclination to always want to be in an extractive relationship with people who are more marginalized with, than you. And what I mean by extractive is you know that you can get this type of care and nurturing from specific type of people. That's why you ask them. But you don't ask that of people who traditionally you wouldn't go and ask them for. And I think that I don't think it's actually helpful to people to to give them that labor. And this could be my own shortcoming <laughs> as a human or whatever. 
But I actually don't think that it's beneficial. And I'm saying this for the room in general. I don't think it's beneficial to coddle or enable people who continually ask you for labor when we know how they interact with other people. We know that they are comfortable asking for something from me or Penn or another gender marginalized person, but they won't ask that from their quote unquote peers. I don't think that that's liberatory. And a lot of times I refuse to engage with that and I don't name why. So this is just a space where I'm so explicitly naming that a lot of the, the tendencies that we show in our relationships are also political. And I, and I don't think we should take that for granted. And I hope that makes sense. No, it absolutely made sense. And you gave me something to think about, a self-critique that I'm going to actually engage in because oftentimes, you know, I'll hear a question and my immediate response is like, oh, problem, I need to fix it. Because that's how I act in like, you know, my life a lot. I'll see a problem in the community, I need to create a survival program. Someone asks me a question, I need to do the work. But I need to reassess and do some reflection about what happens when I'm always showing up for people in ways that could be harmful for everybody else? Will then that person go and expect other people, other black lesbians, since I am a lesbian, to do that same work for them? To be like, okay, well, Penn, she's always willing to answer questions. Well, then you got to do the same or you're not as principled. And then so I could see how exactly what you're saying needed to be said. And I want to thank you for saying that. And you gave me something to think about, for real. Appreciate and to be it. honest, and you know, between you and I, the reason why I feel that a lot of times is because I feel very protective of you. And I feel very protective of the ways that people come to you for that type of labor. And I just want to make sure that that's always reciprocal. Like when people come on the stage, are we thanking Penn? Are we sh like showing love in the inbox? I actually don't know because Penn don't tell me these things. <laughs> so y'all probably are. But I want to just remind y'all, like, you know, like, how are we also, sh anyway, um, let me be quiet, <laughs> but you know, I fuck with you, so. No, and I appreciate it, because also what you demonstrated, too, in this space is that, for me, it's easier to stick up for other people, and sometimes we forget that, well, here's someone that sounds like they know what they're talking about, or someone who's intelligent, or whatever, right, and we forget, like, we got to look out for them, too. So I love that you like will notice something and will speak up because it gives other permission to do the same and to be like, look, I got to make sure that community is not just like, oh, this person already knows and reads a lot of uh, theories. So therefore, I don't need to say anything. If they didn't say anything, it must be right. And it's like, no, I miss a lot of stuff, especially if it's directed towards me. I miss it all the time. That's a huge blind spot. I catch it when everyone else is in danger and, I, and I'm in fight mode. But oftentimes I forget about myself. So I really really appreciate you for speaking up because it's not always easy but i do admire the way that you do so effortlessly thank you very much and again i have a lot of self-reflection to do um i would i think the hands were a uh, shango who's who's back up who's new and then we'll go back to jv so shango what's up so once again um I'm happily in the position of echoing and extending all of like the great things that was that was said before me. Um, so I wanted to say uh, really quickly that pens and uh, chooses and uh, four cups and even uh, the speaker uh, JV reminds us uh, underscores the importance that if the revolution starts in our communities wherever we show up. Uh, to be liberation minded, right? Um, uh, at all times and uh, in the spaces where we occupy, in the barbershops, the hair salons, wherever, our, uh, the community, right? Among uh, our coworkers, uh, our friends, our families, and so on. Um, and to not be complicit. I think there are folks who will say, well, who might pat themselves on the back and say, well, I was well behaved. So they might be in the barbershop and they hear some misogynistic language or homophobic language or conversation um, or sitting at the table um, with their family or friends. And they may not say anything. Um, they stay quiet and then they'll have the easy and the comfortable or even glamorous self-righteous recourse is saying, well, I, I wasn't the one who said it. 
But I want to remind folks that inaction is also an action, right? And if you do not, it is your responsibility. You assume a responsibility in the way of, if you say you're a revolutionist or, you know, you're uh, liberation minded, to intervene, to act as an intervention and to speak up uh, and to say something, to disrupt the narrative that is part of uh, white supremacy and capitalism, right? The classing of the of humanity into these separate groups and distinctive groups. Also, I like to remind folks that we often speak of ter- these things in terms of discrete entities, like the trans people over there, the women over there, the disabled folks over there, and so on. And they don't. We must be reminded uh, as we move towards or we move. The conditions uh, begin to emerge that is revolutionary, that our liberation is a collective thing. That means our oppressions are all linked. None of us are discrete entities. So you may not be a woman, you may not be disabled, you may not be Black, you may not be et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, of all the classes, the class distinctions that are made to divide the working class, right? And humanity in general, so to fit them for exploitation fit them more properly for exploitation into these distinct groups. Um, You must see that we are collectively, our oppression and our liberation is linked. You will not gain liberation for yourself, whatever group you may be a part of, um, if we are not all free, if we are not all liberated. And so I've heard uh, even in this space, not by any of the speakers, but people have come to this space and said, well, you know, What's happening in Palestine has nothing to do with me, um, which is just inherently false. And I, you know, I have to remind those folks or all of us that what is happening to those uh, to the Palestinians is happening to us, has happened to us, and will continue to happen to us um, because it's the same force that is responsible for your oppression, imperialism, capitalist imperialism, and white supremacy, right? which is the very um, product of uh, the, the Israeli quote-unquote state uh, is the product of that. And so, um, yeah, I just want to remind that, um, to put out that reminder and that those are the thoughts that came to mind as each speaker was speaking, that we can't think of ourselves as not, even though we may not identify as some other group that we are separating ourselves from them and see their cause or their push for liberation as different or disconnected from our own. Uh, It is also another way to undermine all of the the class structure because one of the things that makes capitalism uh, operate as smoothly as it does, as efficiently as it does, is that it's able to fracture and class um, people racialize them, gender them, um, and so on, right? Other them in so many different ways. And so um, all they have to do, all the politicians and the the oligarchs have to do is to get you fighting, um, to get us all fighting this or that group, right? Um, That is not you, that you feel is not connected to you. You can dehumanize other groups, right? Because you don't, see that we have a shared humanity and we have a shared struggle. Um, We all exist under um, uh, experience, uh, different dimensions of the same struggle, of the same oppression. Um, So yeah, that's what I wanted to add. Thank you. No, thank you. Appreciate it. And everyone who's grabbed a mic, I want to say thank you. And those who sat and listened as well, thank you for coming to the space and sharing space with us. I want to continue this conversation, but it's not going to be for too much longer because, like always, I'm hungry. (laughs) But I do want to keep it going. I have I wanted to speak towards the dehumanization aspect you brought up. Um, I was talking with you earlier today and when you brought it up, it reminded me of that conversation. And I want to talk about it, but I'll go ahead and give it to JV and I'll go after him. But if I forget, someone remind me. It's about dehumanization in connection with the Palestinian resistance going on. Go ahead, JV. Yeah, respect, respect. Um, I want to hear what, Biko had a second question. 
I want to position that question before I go. My position submission. Do you have an answer for him? I I don't remember the second question. The Be second there. question was about the second question was about how do we do that when we're really close to people, um, and where you know the people who you're calling in for accountability are the, your friends. Did you want to answer that, JV? Well, I mean, w w you're saying what's happening? Well, Biko's second question is, how do we hold people accountable who we're really close to? So uh, did you want to answer uh, that? I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. um, my fast track question is, um, it's volatile. It's going to be volatile. Like accountability in that respect with proximity is always going to be like that. <sighs> I really wish Biko would, would position himself, but um, I don't think there's a solution to that. Like, we're going to fight. We're going to fight each other. But I think the issue is we op people op opportunize our f infighting for their own agenda. And that's my small answer. But I think he had a little bit more depth to his position. I, I really want to know what he was saying, but yeah, we're gonna fight. That literally, that's we're in a fight right now. We're being very mature with it. We're being, um, we're being nice and we're being, but we're fighting. So, um, that's that to that answer. So let me just get my submissions y'all to y'all go for it. Um, my submission is that um, I appreciate um liberation and the idea of liberation and how we should position ourselves with liberation and i particularly think we have to like protect one another right we're here right now if anybody else come here and say hey liberation looks like this i, I don't really want to deal with that before we deal with what we're dealing with that's what i feel and um I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to be a misogynistic. I don't want to be a uh, xenophobe. I don't want to be any of those things. But I do want to protect this thing of ours. So that's how I feel. Y'all can beat me up later. Yeah, so I'll go right quick as far as I want to put a challenge to everyone in the space, but especially the cis men in the space. The question that Biko posed, I want y'all to ask yourself that and really wrestle with it and don't let it go and just chalk it up to there's nothing you can do because there is something you have to do if we're talking about being liberated, right? So Biko's question was about accountability. If you want to get free and you want to see your people and everyone free, in what ways in your life and the people around you are you holding them accountable for in the ways in which they harm people, especially people of a marginalized gender? What does that look like? So if your boy, if your people around you are being misogynistic in any way, harassing women, uh, being violent towards them, or or like, uh, what do you call it, normalizing a lot of things that should not be normalized, that, again, comes at the expense of ginger marginalized people, in what ways are you holding them accountable? And I don't want this to be like in the hypothetical. We all know a misogynist. <laughs> We all know a homophobe. We all know a transphobe. They are all around us because that is, have been made and embedded in us to be something normal and accepted and that communities are supposed to like turn a blind eye to. So the reason why I say I'm going to put that as a call to action, and a, well, not call to action, but a question that I want all of y'all to wrestle with and answer is because, again, these aren't just about differing of opinions. <laughs> it's not that when you have a misogynist president, I'm president. When you have a misogyn misogynist present, there we go. You have someone who has already infiltrated your movement. And you have to think in those terms. You have someone that is splitting your community. So addressing that misogyny, addressing that violence and that harm is not what divides our community. So when we say something like, oh, you know, sometimes um, the state uses us holding those people accountable to further divide us, I would argue the opposite. Brief Scoop brought up a very good example that I misunderstood at first, but I'm glad he clarifies that I can get the full scope of what happened. Is that there, the police in that organization actually protected the sexual assaulter because they have direct state in having those reactionaries presence within groups because they will always cause fractures and disunity. So look at your misogyny, 
as something that you need to confront and fix, but not only within yourself, but again, in your community and the people around you. That's your immediate circle, as well as people that you engage with in, online or that just exist online. You cross your timeline and you see some foul shit. You need to say something and let it be practiced because if you're too scared to say something online, I guarantee you you're not doing the work in real life because that's even scarier because you're not behind a phone. You're not behind a profile. You're actually face to face with that person and you have to deal with them in community. So it boils down to like, what are you really ready to fight for? And accountability isn't about like infighting. It's not. It is a process of, again, practicing not only community, but making sure we build something sustainable that can actually liberate us. We can't get liberated creating safe spaces for misogynists and transphobes and homophobes. Absolutely not. What we do create is safe spaces for fascists and fascism to continue. That's something we can't have. And that's when we become reactionary. So I wanted to say that. And then, so that was towards Biko's question. So basically, JV, what you said brought up about labor and then asking those people who are directly harmed by, you know, misogynists and people who are transphobic and homophobic to then give you the solution is still of the same mind frame of, again, causing harm. Take your autonomy back and say, hey, you know what? Okay, I no longer want to beat this. What do I need to do? And I guarantee you, if you look around you, you will come up with many of things you need to address. And again, address within yourself, but also address in the people you engage with as well. And the people that you witness engaging in those things. The way you grab a mic in the space asking for the solution, you can grab a mic in the spaces that are toxic and say, y'all niggas need to straighten up and hold them accountable and go out there next. Like that needs to be done. Amplifying the voices that are calling it out. But make sure, making sure they're not standing alone either. And not being comfortable with allowing those people to exist without being held accountable because it's not you saying it directly, which I think Shango also brought up, that we get comfortable in that. And again, people like to be misogynist by proxy. Like, yeah, they'll have a person who's violently, has rhetoric, is, rhetoric is so violent and vile, but people will sit in the listener sections and, and give them numbers and space uh, engagement. But we'll not grab a mic and call it out. But we'll grab a mic and ask that we provide that labor for you. That's what Choose is challenging us on. So listen to that. Play this space back and sit with it. And not every response needs a response. Sometimes when someone offers you something, it does better to, yes, acknowledge like we all need to do and acknowledge the way we internalize these things and perpetuate these things. But then sit down with it and let that, that feeling sink in. And be like, all right, so now that I understand what I need to do, or I'm learning what I need to do, I need to also put that in action and change the world around me. And it starts with the people closest to you. Um, I was going to say something that I was like, remind me later. Do y'all remember? Dehumanization. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the dehumanization process. So I was, me and Chuz were talking earlier, and the point came up about seeing the bodies of mutilated children during the Palestinian resistance against the white settler colonial state of Israel and how that becomes normalized and how we become desensitized to it. And the reason why, Shango, when you were speaking and talking about dehumanization that popped up is because one thing that's going to have an effect on us building like true, uh, a true revolutionary process of liberation is the way in which every day we normalize, we're normalized to not see destruction as what it is and not be like you know disgusted by it like to i'm i would have to admit the point in which i've been desensitized in this whole process of being able to see mutilated bodies trend and then swipe up and see like a a music video that shit ain't normal and the fact that i can literally see i've watched videos of people holding their children who were killed by the white settler colonial state of Israel. And I can watch it and not throw up, not be reviled, not be recoiled. Literally, I can hit retweet. That's not normal either. It's getting to the point that, and I think we really need to have conversations and admit that we can even see bodies of children with their head in one bag and their feet in another and go on and have a conversation like that shit is normal. They are, they are desensitizing us in real time to the point where we can't even recognize our own humanity anymore, but also the human, the in, to recognize the humanity in others. And that also, to me, weighs on whether we um, 
align with certain conflicts and resistance struggles or not, why we can easily say loudly <laughs> on an open app that the Palestinian struggle has nothing to do with me and not feel sick to our stomachs in- immediately after saying that or ignore what's going on in the Congo, in the Sudan, and in other places on the continent or tell them that their struggles must wait until one is done. All those things are able to happen because there is a continued process of dehumanization and desensitization by the spectator. Even if the spectator is radical or not, we all have to admit that we are a part of that process and it's ongoing. So currently right now, I feel as they were being prepped for a level of fascism that once it arrives again, I mean, and I don't mean like fascism is not here. I mean like the next level because it's always increasing and getting more authoritarian and more repressive. That when the next fascist takes over, we will already be a bit of a mindset and a conditioning where we will accept some of the most heinous things to where labor camps won't be foreign to us. And actually they're not because that is literally what prison is. But again, that also speaks to our dehumanization that we actually have open slave camps where people are working for Victoria's Secrets and other corporations for profit, all because they were deemed that they could do so because of a so-called crime. Again, because of poverty that's imposed upon us to keep us as an exploited class, but that we can get up and go to work the next day and everything is fine. These things weigh heavy on my mind because, again, in order to build a a revolution and a resistance struggle, I would need the people to see and I would need to see that the level to which we've been dehumanized and what is a strategy to reclaim our humanity under those conditions so that we can see each other worth fighting for to where the utterance or the dismissal of any liberation struggle won't even come to come out of our mouths or without direct blowback from any and everybody. I just wanted to say that before I forgot, but um, I'm going to ask y'all, I, I want to give the space I think I should give it 20 more minutes because I want y'all to continue talking about whatever the book or even what someone said brings to mind. I don't want to cut it short because, again, these type of materials, I have made the mistake in the past. And I actually owe an apology to those that have engaged in these reading spaces. I have read material without commentary and without discussion, and that's irresponsible. I don't even engage in work like that in real life. Anytime I have material or reading groups, we always engage in vigorous discussion because that's part of the political education. Moving forward, I will make sure I will operate online as I do in real life in a way of approaching this as a political education thing in which we engage with the material and engage in discussion. So I want to leave time for it. I'm going to go on mute and grab a snack because you are going to hear my stomach growling, but I'll... I'll leave the space open for another 20 minutes. And again, thank everyone for participating. So choose if you can look out for me for a while while I grab something to eat. The space can keep going. Her. You're so generous. You're so generous, Penn. Um, While Penn is eating, um, we're going to continue. But I saw JV, your hands up. Yeah. Um, Choose. I'm saying, can we deal with our own liberation before we liberate the world? Because we, I feel like this whole big project of liberating the world, it comes with different narratives, different cultural insertions, and like, what does it look like? Is it similar? Is it different? Do they want to eat pie and we want to eat pumpkin pie? It, it, it's getting really unclear to me what liberation looks like on the world stage. There are things going on in the world that don't even make sense to us. Like, if we look at what people like in the world and it's important for them, we would be like, ew, that's crazy. I don't want to do that. That's not, I don't want to, that's not nice. So I'm, I'm concerned about this liberate, this world liberation project without liberating ourselves first and then saying, okay, we're liberated. What do you bring into this? It's an exchange. It's like it's like interaction. We do a whole liberation project. Say, hey, bro, you go, you can marry your little do- your little cousin. Like, no, I'm not doing that, bro. I'm cool. No, we about to have a fight. And they do that, and they're doing that in America. They literally lowering lowering that's my point. for child that's marriage. Point, that's not my point. But it is your point, right? Because it, you're gonna bring up stuff that other places do. And that all those other places may or may not do though, but you know who does do that? America. So when and the problem the problem with even the the positioning of that 
is we're not going to pretend like the American empire hasn't touched every other part of the world. Our fight is actually everyone else's fight because the American empire has spread so far that the same mechanisms that oppressed us when we was in Ferguson, it was the Palestinians telling us how to deal with the tear gas. Why? Because when they took pictures of the canisters, it was the same motherfucking canisters. So there's no way to have this conversation in a serious way with if we're actually being historical, right? If we're being historical, the fact of the matter is the American empire needs to die, not only for us to be free, but for also many other people around the world to be free. So that question, again, we need to do the work because if we don't understand that the same tear cast canisters was in Ferguson, that they use in Palestine, if we don't understand those connections, if we don't understand the NYPD goes to train in Israel, then it's then it's very hard to have a conversation that's rooted in facts. Because the fact is, if other people around the world are liberated, so are we. And if we liberate ourselves, other people are also liberated. And anybody who told you anything different is a fucking op. I, I like to say some be on stack. May I be on stack? Um, yeah, I, I saw hands, but I don't see them no more, but I also see Penn's hands. Penn, did you get a snack? JV talked, okay? It, hey, <laughs> I go I right know. Back Penn, to- you need to get a snack. Okay. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you. I'm okay, sorry. so full, Penn, come on. <laughs> but I'm gonna need you to eat something. I need you to eat, man. Yeah, I, I just wanna say, I wanna say something just real fast. Look. Yeah, Penn, is it okay if we let other people take this? Yeah, and- you're right. Yeah, okay. I just, go ahead. Uh, uh, Cop City, y'all know about the Cop City, and, yeah, and they're and we they're know building. We know about they, it. Uh, well, they building these things across the country, and the people that are going to be teaching these police officers are Israeli, Israeli motherfucking occupation concentration camp fucking guards. So what's happening in Palestine is going to come to these shores. I'm telling y'all now, America's power is waning in the world. The world is telling these these fucking crackers, go fuck yourself. So what they're going to do is turn this shit around right on us. So I'm telling y'all now, be prepared for the hell that is coming to us. Because just like what Penn, Penn was saying earlier about how we can witness these children being murdered, dismembered, and we could just post a video about twerking afterwards um, that's what they setting us up for is for the hell that they will unleash upon us when this is over with when the u.s power is completely disposed of in the world they are coming to lock us down and they are coming for black people they're coming for oppressed people so we have to prepare and i've been trying to tell people this for the longest and i'm so happy that the space is open and y'all been and y'all touched on stuff that i you know i I, I had to speak because I wasn't going to say nothing at first because I'm tired, but it's the, it's the truth. I'm, I've been trying to warn people. They're doing this for a reason. They're showing us all this for a reason because they're going to they're gonna unleash it on us. And, and that's 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 what I've been moved to say. So love y'all. Pan, I love you. Choose violence. Love that, y'all. Throw that in the, in the chat. The um, Israelis, um, pan, um, the city. Can you throw that in the chat, please? Cop city. What you mean throw it in the chat? You mean uh uh what you talking about throw it in the chat? Oh, no, so what's gonna happen, JV, real quick? You're gonna you're gonna Google. The same internet you're using to be in this space, you're going to Google dead ass because that is not something hard to find. And no, Damien, you're not gonna do no labor putting it and finding it, making a post and put it in the chat. Because that's something again, that's not hard to find. I want you to Google uh cops getting trained by the IDF and you will find a plethora of articles. And you're going to do that work for yourself because you want to be liberated real quick because I'm heating up my food. So I'm doing it. But just a bit. Oh, no, white, white power fist. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't Wait, no, no. Pin, pin. That's not fair. <laughs> Hold on, JV. Hold on, JV. I'm not done yet. I'm not. I'm not done. It is fair. It is very fair because you have Internet access. And so, yes, you can Google and find out like, OK, he gave me the keywords, gave me the breadcrumbs, graciously shared with me. So I guess what I'm going to do, the work for myself and I'm going to do research just as we research this reactionary. JV, if you come up here, Mike, one more time, JV, I'll let me finish. Go about Cop City. OK, I'm good. I was involved with it. All right. So you don't have to be involved. I literally just told you to Google. 
So I removed him from speakers because he kept coming off the mic because he'll ask someone to do labor. But when someone says to do for self, there's excuses. I wasn't involved in it. No one asked you to be. They said Google. That's very simple to do if you really wanted to know. But it seemed more like if you if Damien didn't produce the post, if he didn't do the labor after he heard his brother tell him he's fucking tired. He was like, all right, yeah, all that tired. So do some more work. And if you can't do it, then we don't need to listen. No, I'm not going to just let that happen. So sorry, Damien, I'm glad you brought up Cop City. It's absolutely accurate. And for people in this space, if you want to know more, not only can you Google, but you can also go on the search icon on Twitter and put in Cop, Cop City IDF or put in police, U.S. police and IDF and plenty of posts and resources and materials will come up to you. Real quick to answer his question. So a lot of us are going to hear this isolation rhetoric happen more and more. And again, they use the uh, reparations when we co-opted it to bring in this isolation rhetoric. And what it is, is that they'll say, like, y'all have no ties to any movement going on globally. That Black Americans, what's happening to you in America is you need to get free first. Now, they'll say this while saying the rhetoric of we're not free until we're all free. So when someone says that and then follows it up, let's do ours first. I don't think you understand what that the saying meant. Like, literally, the blueprint was already written saying we're not free until we're all free. Our struggles are interconnected. That's just what it is, because white supremacy is a global power domination. Imperialism is global. The Western empire seeks to expand and continue to expand and dominate globally. So what happens is when you have someone and let's say in the peers over in California, shutting down shipments going from uh, from America to another place, guess where that affects? That affects every corporation that has stock or profit within that boat that needs to get to point A to point B in order for them to make money. Corporations are not just based in America. That now the, not now, but the way the corporate class works, they have hands and enterprise all across the world. So you hit them everywhere. It's just like how they ask for a boycott. McDonald's doesn't just exist here in America. It exists globally. Uh, the fruit companies that sit there and kill revolutionaries and people who are fighting for environmental, environmental justice, they get killed by these same corporations. So when people say, hey, you and your block boycott this company, that's because you're actually impacting the resistance movements that are going on against those companies who are acting in that way overseas. Because, again, they go overseas to exploit people as well as exploit people here at home. So there is no such thing as revolution in a in a in a, a vacuum or in a bubble to where you do something that is direct action and it only packs you in your immediate family. That's not how this shit works. Matter of fact, it can't work like that. Again, it's interconnected. And if you would do just a little bit of the work that you are demanding from other people, you would understand that why we're saying to go do it for yourself, because you won't retain it. Because I know you've heard these talking points before, because, again, not to pile on JV, but he asked the question. He has been in many of these reading spaces and we have covered this stuff extensively. So the people in the community have shown up for you. Now it's time to show up for yourself. And again, do the basic work. That's what I thought it was strange. He's been in the space before. Can you hear me? Many times. I'm talking about, J yep, JV. I'm talking about mm -hmm. JV. He was in the last one we was meeting by the man Barry. Okay? Now... He, uh, I, I know a lot of people do that bullshit. They always they, they don't want they want you to hand them some shit and all this other bullshit. And they did it. But, but what they're doing is they want the information to weaponize and throw the shit back in your face. All that shit about the this and that about overseas and that that's some ADOS bullshit on, on, on the low. That's some ADOS bullshit. That's what it is. You know. You know, because Ado's got very different iterations. You know, and basically, what it's saying is you can be a blood sucking motherfucker and fuck the motherfuckers over overseas and Caribbean, Latin America, and Africa. Fuck them. The shit here is more important. That's what you're really saying. You understand? And that. And then Biko, why, right? So why is it that they want you to believe in that rhetoric and say, fuck them overseas, you have a stake in this white supremacist empire? It's because they know once there is agitation here in the belly of the beast, that is the beginning of the end. It is necessary. What did George Jackson teach us, y'all? He said that it is imperative that those in imperial core wage guerrilla warfare against the beast because that is in culmination with what's going on globally will bring it into the Western Empire. So when you go along with the rhetoric of, oh, can we handle this over here first? That is by design. That's not even something that's organic to the black community. That's something that was imposed, thought of in a think tank, 
the group is called PFAIR, Progressive for Immigration Reform, which Yvette Carnell sat on the board at, got checks for spreading this propaganda and co-opting a movement. And now people who send their eating it up, doing no research, doing no decolonization, doing no real work, are now also spreading this and saying, well, why can't we do this? It is not organic to us. It's being fed to us by the business and managerial class who says, hey, Certain black Americans, if y'all go into this isolation rhetoric, this xenophobic shit, this anti-African, this shit, this, this, this whole can we repurpose patriotism shit, you do that and you will be allowed to be in the buffer class. You will be the buffer against and have your rightful place above the immigrant and above the other You're people right that you keep hockey. below you. You're right with the cracker. No, okay. <laughs> You'll get to sit on the front right step. <laughs> They on that native and shit, build a wall, them motherfuckers still in that. That's that same rhetoric. And then if we talking about Cop City, this shit weird. Why would you ask about Cop City and you, like you don't know nothing about this shit and you've been in all kind of other spaces? Something weird with that. that, that it's something that spring bells in my motherfucking head. You was in the other month because all this shit is anonymous. None of these motherfuckers know each other. These motherfuckers be hopping and jumping in these spaces. And I, it gave me the motherfucker. It, 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 it sent bells off of my motherfucking dome shit. Because uh, you, you don't know nothing about Cop City, but you claim to be around this here, this and that, and all this other wild shit. Then he tried to get a space with me. Talking about, you don't, I said, I don't know how to operate the motherfucker over the space. He said, you got to get your space. You got all the information, all that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, what the fuck? There's something wrong, man. See, you got motherfuckers coming here just to be trying to see what the fuck going on, around back on some other shit that I really don't want to get into that we all know what I'm talking about. You understand? And then you got motherfuckers in here that really chess up, flexing this shit on that, on that, on that, uh, what we call that, machismo, but they want, but they want to see what the queers talking about, you know, and, and get some info and intelligence. This shit, these motherfuckers be on here stalking, they be trying to get in motherfuckers, mix and shit, and, and, and it really ain't, and really ain't no way to screen the shit. No, for real. And JV, I know you're in requests, but again, I've already told you, I want you to sit and think about these things being talked about because you're just responding. You'll throw something out there, pause, and then put everyone else to work. You know there's work that you need to do. I know you haven't done it in 2.5 seconds. So you need some work to do before you get a, a mic back in here. And we're going to continue, continue discussing and building. I'm going to keep the space up for maybe another 10 minutes. I encourage people to go back and listen to the reading. The PDF is free in the Jumbotron and also too in the comment section, as well as the Jumbotron, there are mutual aid posts. Support those and help spread awareness about that so, other, so those in position that can support can also I support some, because I that's part of the community. Might have been a blind spot you ain't peak in the space. Okay. Most of the dudes want to talk about imperialism, uh, dialectical materialism, then they come with all the academic semantics. When they, when they start talking about rape culture and sexual assault and accountability, all them motherfuckers, they switch the subject back to, uh, uh, class struggle and the, the whole thing and this, that. And that. Did you peep that? Did you? No, yeah, for real. Since dudes, dudes in here, they want to keep it on some theoretical shit and, Talk about uh, the Condom Time and what the motherfuckers did in Vietnam and, and the Latin American worker and all that other wild shit. But when it comes to something deeply personal, the motherfuckers, uh, the motherfuckers always pivot to that shit. Then motherfuckers don't read or they wouldn't be repeating that 8 old shit. But see, what happened was in the last space with Mary and Barry, you had motherfuckers in there, all kind of motherfuckers. There wasn't that many in there. There were capitalist motherfuckers in there. All this wild shit. I ain't no, you know, I ain't, I ain't got time to be all this. Uh, I, I'm a misogynist. Then, then, like, a lot of no motherfuckers, they be saying I'm a misogynist, but they be with a wry grin. Just to fuck with a motherfucker. That's almost like saying, uh, uh, they saying this shit, but they really, it's about to try to trigger a motherfucker or something, but they be laughing inside, on the inside. Let me fuck with a motherfucker by saying some shit like that. As opposed, nice. as opposed to saying I need mm -hmm. to do some introspection, I have some, a lot of things to work on. 
And period, point blank, that's my thing. Just work on yourself. You were given a task already. You still won't do it, but you want to speak. And it's like me, when I know there's work to be done, when someone has brought something to my attention where I need to engage in self-critique, guess what I'm going to go do? I got work to do and I have to self-reflect and engage in that self-critique. I no longer need to speak on that issue until I've done the work to be able to come back and engage in it principally. And these are practices that we have to instill and practice ourselves and demonstrate, but then also in, in, in line with accountability, demand each other do the same. Basically, and that's real community. They try to gaslight a motherfucker. That they try to gaslight motherfuckers and they already know what the dilly toe is. You know? Then switch the conversation to see if motherfuckers gonna flow with it to that the way they think it. You know, or, or 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 pivot back to something more abstract. But that way they ain't gotta deal with their own shit. You know. No, I hear you. So real quick, Nico, I wanna reset the room because I also don't want to make it to where someone is just like the central and being like centered in this conversation. We were having dope ass conversation. Everyone has contributed in a way that to me has expanded upon what we were reading, the war of the flea. And we're going to continue. I think I have maybe two more spaces to get out of this book. It's not very long, but I want to be able to read pieces and then engage in this work of us talking and having dialogue and having like real substantive conversation on the work. So if anyone has anything or if y'all want to get back to the conversation I had as far as what pertains to the book, some things that you want to touch on and expand upon with the minds in this room. Again, you don't have to grab a mic if you're not comfortable. Use the comments section to also ask, ask questions. JV, do not test me. Do not blow up my comments section with no BS. I'm not even kidding. So again, I want you out the request. I want you to chill and listeners if you want or go engage in self-critique and do the work. We're going to carry on the conversation. You can stay and listen, but you're not giving the mic. So I'll, I'll give it to my co-host, and I'm eating right now. I am choose. I am. <laughs> and then I'll give it to <laughs> you. You know exactly what I was about to say. Um, pen, as in I hear no microwave, no nothing in the background, but I'm glad you could. Um, I also want to name that um, Climate Dread Era said, is it just me or does Penn have the most soothing voice ever? She do. While talking about total annihilation of empire, she do. With the goat emoji twice. Yes, you are the goat. Um, twice. Three times. Um, to be honest, personally, I don't really have anything to add. These spaces are recorded because people come back and they listen to the interactions, they listen to the reading. I think that there's a lot of important things that happen in this space that needed to be named. So I'm grateful that people can see like, what does an intervention look like in real time? I'm really grateful that every speaker came up and spoke um, and shared their knowledge and just, you know, share space with us and named like, even like, yo, like I love when folks are really vulnerable and name like things like brief scoop name like the things that he's seen in movement because you're not the only one and when we have these conversations very candidly uh, it makes people feel less alone so just special shout out to you for naming the situations that you've been in as well because i haven't forgot that um ultimately i feel like you know this space was really beautiful i don't know what else there is to say but I want to encourage everyone to like get their last thoughts before the space is closed. Can I just say thank you, Penn, for this space. Thank you, um, everybody who has spoken. Um, thank you for um, y'all's words and y'all's thoughts. Um, I love these spaces. This is this is nice. Like this is community um, to be able to discuss these things and learn together. And um, I don't know. I'm just very appreciative and thankful. Um, yeah. No, thank y'all. It seems like oh, Damon, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, I, you know, so I, same thing. Thank you. You know what I'm saying for these spaces and everything. But like, Biko was, was touching on was touching on that topic because you know one motherfucker can ruin a whole movement. You know what I'm saying, and it only takes that one subversive ass shit to make everything collapse. 
So we have to call it out. It has to be called out. You know, a lot of times people don't want to be that person. You know what I'm saying? To be like, oh, this motherfucker fucking up. You know what I'm saying? But steel sharpen steel. We have to do that. You know what I'm saying? If we don't, then it festers and other shit happens to make it even worse. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna give you a topic right now what happened and what I've seen to where I had to literally walk away from shit. It was a dude, like, he was uh, friends friends with my home, with my, with my home girl, right? But he started being, like, extras. You know what I'm saying? Like, she would, you know, she would let him come in and chill. But then he would stay too long, and she's like, you know, and she's non-confrontational, so she's like trying to give him like little hints to like, you know, leave my house, and he would be like, nah, you know, she's like, I'm going to sleep, and he'd be like, oh, I'm gonna stay on your couch. So she approached us, and she was like, look, I got this dude that you know, I, I tried to be cool with him, and I, I'm trying to like give him innuendos to like leave and stuff like that, but he's pushing himself on me, and like I don't feel comfortable. So we had to approach him to be like, yo, you need to relax. You know what I'm saying? You need to chill out and, you know, learn, learn to know when, you know, time is enough and, you know, and stay and stay away from it pretty much. Comes to another thing where we go, we go to another action helping the Cayuga and this motherfucker shows up again, right? Now he starts dating a 16 year old, you know what I mean? So I blew the shit up. I'm like, nah, this ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker has a wifey on the res, a kid. And he's dating a 16 year old like you're a fucking pedophile. So I called him out on it. You know what I'm saying? And they kicked him out of that space. Now he's back in another space with one of my mentors. And like, you know, everybody's like, oh, we need to forget about the past. You know, he's changed. I'm like, that shit don't change. You know what I'm saying? Like, like y'all make it. Y'all, this is fucking dangerous because of, now what happens if he starts doing this shit now with somebody else or with your own daughter? You know what I mean? Like, th this shit has to be purged out, and I had to walk away. Like, I literally had to walk away from this because people are not realizing the danger that's involved with somebody like this. You know what I'm saying? And, and it has to be called out. You know, I, it, it, you know, it hurts my soul to have to walk away from people that I love because they they're letting in straight up agents. That you know what I'm saying? Dangerous people. But it it has to be called out you know what i'm saying and four cups she 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 touched on that topic pen touched on it choose Biko, all y'all and it's the truth it has to be called out and if and if it doesn't change then you need to walk away to protect yourself you know what i'm saying at any time because uh, you know this is not what we're trying to do we're trying to build each other up we trying to we trying to have community and you can't have elements like this inside the community or it's going to destroy shit so you know that's that's my that's my two cents. Love y'all. I want everybody to be safe. Also, prepare, start training, get people together. You know, learn survival skills. If you got a weapon, you know, what I'm saying, start using that shit. Learn how to use it properly. You know, because the the collapse is coming. It's it's either gonna come by the end of this year or next year. You know what I mean? And I feel that for real. Like so, you know, prepare. That's that's my last message. No, thank you. And real quick, because I just don't want to forget that, you know, what y'all named about calling things out, like how Choose demonstrated when she heard something and she was like, wait, let's sit and talk about this, what just happened, how important things like that is, right? Because we all have blind spots, including me. So y'all will be in the space and we'll be reading revolutionary text theory and expanding on things and I will still miss something. Never hesitate to either be in the comments, my DMs, or grab a mic if you feel comfortable and call it out. If I give out misinformation, check it. To me, that's an ultimate act of love and community because one thing I hate is being wrong. And what I mean by that is I hate someone knowing that I'm wrong and no one tells me and I'm just walking around here just loud and wrong. Nah, don't have me out here like that. And I won't do that to you. So I want us to keep engaging in that and not be afraid. And then also too, when people bring something to your attention and say, hey, you know what, think about this. Be self-aware enough to say, let me pull back and let me actually think about it. Sometimes we want to respond because we want the image of ourselves to be pristine. We want people to look at us a certain way and not see us as fallible, but that's not real. That's an illusion. And we can't operate on that in any sustainable way, in any way that uh, builds a strategy toward liberation. So I want to thank also to the people who grabbed the mic when JV asked about that and just called it on and said, this is bullshit. Now, 
enough and was very real. And I want to highlight that too, because oftentimes we dismiss certain deliveries if they're not done in a very nice, polite way. We, we focus too much on decorum and like, oh, you know, be nice or you're going to run them away. And it's like, no, if someone is harmful, you have every right to address that harm. And if that person is not willing to hear the critique, unless it comes in cotton candy and bubble gums, well, then that person just doesn't want to hear the critique. And then that they're, they're demonstrating that they don't want accountability. And y'all already have my answer from previous spaces on how I deal, depending on the harm, how I deal with people like that. And I stand by it. So I want to thank people like Biko for just being you and saying how you said, holding your brothers accountable and saying, nah, man, do better. And you've been in other spaces, what is going on here? And then also Shango and Damien and other people, but also to the work of the co-hosts, both of them, Four of Cups and Shoes. It is not easy, like looking out for each other and then always saying something. That is labor too. And of course, you are also impacted by these systems that we're constantly challenging. So I want to thank y'all that even living in that intersection, you still show up and you show up for us and you teach us on uh, how to practice community in real time and in these spaces. So thank you, Choose and Four of Cups very much. Thank you. Per, um, before we go, can I just lift up that today our elder um, Seiko Odinga past and transition into the ancestral realm. Um, I would urge everyone to look up his contributions. He was serving time in jail for the liberation of Asada Shakur. Um, and when we think about people who are doing interruptions, that's who I really think about. Like, sure, this is a space, but there are people getting comrades free. And that's real as fuck. And I just want to, like, I guess, as a space and then it wouldn't feel right to me if we didn't lift up that, you know, we lost somebody today um, and lift up like how important he is and even lift up like Asado who's probably in like definitely in mourning right now um, for her comrade. Like this is not a, like a game, you know, people spend their whole lives in mourning over comrades that they've lost and never got to see again. So I just wanted to lift him up before we end the space, because it just, it wouldn't feel right if we didn't. No, thank you. So I'll go ahead and end the space with a reminder, look in the comment section for the mutual aids that I saw on the timeline that need boosting and support. And as well as in the Jumbotron, there's a PDF of the book, uh, War of the Flea. And also there is the previous space, part one, also in the Jumbotron, for those who want to go back and listen and share. And I'll make a thread connecting all of these spaces together so people can revisit anytime they need and want. Also, too, don't forget there's captions available on this as well. And because of Mr. Mittens, I've actually been doing uh, more work in making sure that the images that's on the PDF have alt text. And I want to encourage everyone to do that as well. Part of this work is making sure all information is as accessible as possible. So let's challenge ourselves on that as well. So with that, I want y'all all to, I hope all y'all have access to food and shelter and can be warm at this time and take care of each other, look out for each other, and above all, let's get free. <laughs>